hi and welcome so in this video we are going to discuss about the approach the solution of heart sequence this was asked in court chef november 19 okay 2019 november in division b okay the question heart sequence so let's begin with the question explanation the test case explanation and the approach okay this is a very straightforward question he have decided to write an infinite sequence initially he wrote zero then he started repeating the following process so we will begin with one base indexing okay so initially he wrote zero oh, fine look at the last element written so far so this is the process he follows now we wrote zero and the first number is zero we are at the second number now okay look at the last element written so far the last element written so far is nothing but zero okay let's denote it by x okay fine so x here becomes zero okay if x does not occur anywhere earlier in the sequence so before this before this if x that is zero right now does not occur earlier before this okay the next element in the sequence is zero the next element in the sequence is zero okay so what is the meaning x value was zero if zero does not occur earlier before this then the next element will be zero this is the second step this is the second step okay now we have completed this and we are at the third index okay we have inserted two elements okay so if condition was true we do not go to the else condition we return back okay so look at the last element written so far so look at the last element written so far it is nothing but zero so x equals to zero okay if x does not occur anywhere earlier in the sequence now we are we are seeing this x okay now this x actually occur here before it occurs earlier in the sequence this x occurs earlier in the sequence as the at this position okay so if condition will fail we will go to the else condition else look at the previous occurrence of x in the sequence yes we did okay suppose this is a kth element fine okay so the next element the next element will be l minus k l minus k that is minus the indexes 2 minus 1 will be 1 okay so the next element will be l minus k which is nothing but 2 minus 1 will be 1 so the next element here will be 1 okay so what it is saying here is nothing but this is done right now so the next one is this so look at the previous element look at the previous stored element which is one is one occurring anywhere be before it is one occurring anywhere before it no one is not occurring anywhere before it so simply put a zero simply put a zero okay see move ahead and see the previous element which is it is zero is zero occurring anywhere before it yes the nearest zero that is occurring before it is here okay the nearest zero that is occurring before it is here okay so this is zero so just minus the indexes 4 minus 2 so the next element will be 2 4 minus 2 next element will be 2 okay that's simple that simple is the sequence that they have shown okay next here next go ahead which is the previous element 2 is 2 occurring anywhere before it no so this will be zero this will be simply be zero okay that's simple what is the next one the next one here is nothing but previous element is 0 is 0 occurring anywhere before it yes the nearest is this 6 minus 4 is 2 so 2 will come here i think you understood what they are trying to say and what is the question here okay now just go here which is the next element previous element 2 is 2 occurring anywhere before it yes the nearest is this 7 minus 5 is 2 okay so this is how this sequence is created this is how this sequence is created this is what the question is okay what we need to find is we need to find given on any number in the inside the sequence for example we are given two then how many times that two is occurring then how many times that two is occurring and one more point chef has given you a task to perform consider the nth element of the sequ sequence denoted by x and the first n elements of the sequence find the number of occurrence of x among these n elements what is the meaning of this if we have n equals to 2 if we have n equals to 2 so go to 2 take the second sequence the, the second number that is present at the index 2 which is nothing but 0 and count and count how many zeros comes till the nth element how many zeros come till the nth element the second element is 0 it occurs twice among the first two elements since the first two elements are both 0 so if n value is 5 go to 5 go to 5 that is this okay so from 1 to 5 how many times 2 is occurring that is the answer okay 
if n equals to 8 go to 8 8 is nothing but 2 so till 1 to 8 how many times 2 is occurring that is the answer okay if n equals to 7 go to 7 7 is nothing but 2 so from 1 to 7 check how many times 2 is occurring that is the answer okay so this is what the question is the second element here is 0 it occurs twice among the first two elements since the first two elements are both 0 okay so this is the whole question okay this is what they are trying this is the sequence that they are given us they are also given us the steps to make this sequence so just code that steps down okay we have to code these steps down fine the constants are pretty small n is less than equal to 127 t is less than equal to 128 so it is nothing but 100 multiplied by 100 it is nothing but 10,000 okay and here if we go n square so n 100 this is t n is 100 square 100 so it will go 1 2 3 4 5 6 it's still in the range of one second okay so if you want you can do an order of n square algorithm also and it will be accepted perfectly okay i am going to show you uh, using an extra array using an extra array or if anyone knows map so you can use map also okay and this it will be order of n time complexity okay you can do order of n square also in this it will be accepted fine so let's move forward now with this part okay the approach that i'm going to show you using an extra array fine so i think you understood the question the question is very simple very straightforward now we all just need to do is to implement just write the code for the implementation of the sequence once we get the sequence then finding the count of the number is very very simple that is nothing but linear search and the counting part okay so let's begin with the sequence explanation how we will actually code the sequence down okay let's begin that point let's begin with the explanation so here it will be zero okay in the beginning fine we have the next position we will see the last element okay so if i is 2 and array name is arr so we will be seeing arr of i minus 1 okay this will become x x equals to arr of i minus 1 fine okay now we need to know whether this x is occurring anywhere before it anywhere before it so if you use a loop of j equal to 1 to i minus 1 and check if it is occurring before it and if it is occurring what is the last uh, last index of that occurrence then you can find it out but obviously this will increase the complexity we will not use this approach okay what we actually will do is you can use either map or you can use an another array okay and we will occur, we will store in that map or another array the index that this element last occurred the index that this element last occurred okay for example let's take an array let's take an array okay so this is the new array and here just see what we will be doing okay we will be using these elements at the indexes as this in this new array we will be using these elements as the indexes in this array okay elements as the indexes because we just have 128 elements so it will work okay so here see this is element 0 so where this element is occurring before where this element is occurring before it is occurring at an index 1 so if we store 1 here we will know that this element 0 is occurring previously at index 1 previously at index 1 okay now 0 comes 0 comes now here error of i minus 1 is 0 is 0 occurring anywhere before it is 0 occurring anywhere before it no 0 is not occurring anywhere before this one okay so in the beginning do not do one just remain it as zero fine because it is not occurring anywhere before it okay it is occurring at one at the first time only now let's move forward since it is not occurring anywhere before it you can see at the beginning each every each and every element will have zero in the beginning each and every element will have zero as the answer okay we'll have zero that is these elements are not occurring anywhere before it so go to zero okay check is zero occurring anywhere before this one no so simply put zero here simply put zero here fine so after this simply go here check the previous element so i value is now three i value is now three so x equals to zero x equals to zero now okay so go to zero and check whether it was occurring previously or not but we did not update it we did not update it so there should be a line that updates this value also there should be a line somewhere in our code that updates this value also okay we are going step by step see we are learning 
new things that we have to add in our array so if x equals to 0 at this position we need to know if it is occurred previously or not okay so that's why we created this array we created this array but we did not update anything we did not update anything in this array we need to update it also okay so when previously this zero came out okay and we move to this step that is i equals to three after performing these all operations while performing these all operations at the end what we can do is we can update this value we can update this value to one okay now when this at index three we will check i minus one the previous element it is zero okay so x be becomes zero okay i value is three fine so at i minus one whatever element is present is that element occurred before yes it has occurred at index equals to one this will tell me that it has occurred at index equals to one okay so what is the current index current index is i minus one that is current three and we are accessing the element at i minus one okay what is the value here the for example this array is v so v of zero it is nothing but i minus 1 minus 1 i minus 1 is 2 2 minus 1 is nothing but 1 so store this element at this position store this element at this position this is what we are going to do okay storing that element at this position so we are going to store 1 here and move forward now before moving forward th this is what i explained before moving forward before moving forward we need to update the value of 0 why because 0 now is not at 1 0 now is at 2 the nearest zero the nearest zero for future zeros will be this not this okay we need to update this so update i minus one update i minus one element to two okay that is the current index of zero the nearest zero that will be there for future zeros okay so let's move forward now after this after this everything let's see the next point so here now new i is equal to four okay what is the previous element that is nothing but i minus one previous element is i minus one which is x x equals to one check here at one is there any one has occurred previously before it no no there is no previous occurrences of one so simply put a zero here and move forward okay this is what the second step was correct now i value is nothing but five i value is nothing but five so go to the previous one i minus one i minus one is nothing but zero so x here will become zero x here will become zero okay now check for zero is zero occurred before yes zero has occurred at two zero has occurred at two so simple do i minus one minus v of zero v of zero is nothing but two i minus one is nothing but four four minus two will become two store two here okay so that is why we are using an extra array now new value new value will be nothing but i value will become six i value will move here i minus one will become two it has two occurred before anywhere no two has not occurred before anywhere this is zero okay so this will simply become a zero because it is not occurred before anywhere okay and we forgot to update one also i think yes we forgot to update one so update it one was at three this line you have to write inside your code okay do not forget inside your code fine then go to the next step it is i value will become seven okay i minus one will become six at six we have x equals to zero okay previous index of zero was nothing but four so you have to update that at that step also every time we are forgetting okay do not forget this to update inside your code okay this is just a single line to update so six minus four will become two and we will move forward at that okay now zero is nothing but six the latest zero is at six okay the latest two is at five okay uh, after we move forward the latest two will become seven so you have to update these values these values will give me what was the previous uh, previous index okay using that previous index and the current index that we are accessing so six minus three will give me three and so on okay so we will move forward like this only okay this is a simple code okay using the extra array so what we are going to do is for example the name of that array was visited so first just initialize this array okay to zero everything will be zero fine the next step after you initialize the array to zero in the next step run a for loop run a for loop okay in this loop we will perform all these operations that we have just discussed in this loop we will perform all these operations that is we will access the value of i so i value will become we will begin with i equals to 2 
i less than equals to 129 and i plus plus why 129 in the constraint it is given that n equals to 128 we are beginning with 1 as our index so 1 to 128 and 0 will definitely be present but we will not use it so total elements is 129 okay so the next point is this is why 129 why begin with i equals to 2 because we know that at i equals to 1 the answer is 0 this is given to us okay so in previously only we will write array of 1 equals to 2 so no need to access this we will directly begin with i equals to 2 okay at i equals to 2 what we need to do so at i equals to 2 all we need to do is nothing but first and the foremost thing check whether this is present previously or not okay so we will have some if conditions we will have some else okay and at the end we will update in our visited array we will update in our visited array okay the array of i minus 1 plus plus i will explain you this line also Let's begin with the implementation part now. See here. So if my visited of ARR i minus 1 is not equal to 0, that means it has occurred before. Else it is equal to 0. So means ARR of i will simply become 0. Okay. And at the end, visited of ARR i minus 1 will become i minus 1. Fine. So, what is the meaning of these three lines? This is inside the for loop. Okay. What is the meaning of these three lines? So, just see. It's very simple. Okay. We have an array. We have an array. Fine. And we have a visited array. We have a visited array. Okay. Now, the elements of the above array, the elements of the above array are actually the indexes of this array. Are actually the indexes of this array. Okay. I will explain to this. The elements of the above array are actually the indexes of this array. So if it is 0 here, we are updating 0. If it is 1 here, we are updating at 1 index. If it is 2 here, we are updating something at 2 index. As you can see, the elements of this array are actually the index of this array. So elements of this array are actually the index of this array. See, the elements of this array are actually the index of this array. Okay. So when i value is nothing but 4, okay. We, we want to access array of i minus 1. We want to access array of i minus 1. So see, array of i minus 1 is written here, which is nothing but the index of the visited array. Okay. If array of i minus 1 is not equal to 0, that means if array of i minus 1 is not equal to 0. So this is not equal to 0. Correct. If it is not equal to 0, then what we need to do? If the array of i minus 1 is not equal to 0, then what we need to do? We need to calculate some values. That is nothing but the subtraction. Okay. At array of i, at array of i, what we need to store? We need to store i minus 1 minus visited of this line. Array of i minus 1. What is the meaning of this? At array of i, this means if you are working for 8, okay, the previous element is nothing but 2. Okay, so visited of array of i minus 1. Correct? What is i minus 1? i is 8. 8 minus 1 is nothing but 7. i minus 1 is 7. So visited of visited of sorry array of i minus 1 is 2 i is i minus 1 is 7 array of i minus 1 is 2 so visited of 2 visited of 2 is nothing but right now is 5 okay this will be 5 at this particular position okay visited of 2 will be 5 which is not equal to 0 which is not equal to 0 so if it is not equal to 0 then i minus 1 minus this value i minus 1 minus this value will give me the current answer will give me the current answer okay that is what we are doing here you are doing in this step else simply put a zero else simply put a zero okay and here visited of array of i minus one equals to i minus one what is the meaning of this i told you we need to update every time we need to update each and every time so for this updation that where two came previously where two came previously we will be using this step okay if array of i minus one is two Okay, then where it came previously, it came previously at i minus 1. So that is what we are simply doing here. Okay, so this was a simple code. After this, you just have to write a, uh, for counting how many times that array is coming. That is nothing but simple linear search. That, I don't think that is needs to be explained. I will just code it down directly in the front of you. Okay, this was needed to be explained. What is the use of extra array here? We are using this array to store the previous occurrence. Of our elements we're using this array to store the previous occurrence of our elements and nothing else it is that simple you can use map also for this part okay so let's begin okay uh yes you can use map also for this part fine so let's just begin i will be using array only fine 
so let's begin with the coding now so here scanner sc equals to new scanner system dot in this is java okay you can code the similar thing in c and c plus plus also so c in java then int t equals to sc dot next int this is for the test case while t minus minus is greater than zero let's begin so int just take an array equals to new int of size 129 okay int value equals to sc dot next int this is the input that we need to take what value we need to count out that was int visited equals to new int 256 i'm just taking 256 it is very small so maximum 128 plus 128 can become 256 so that's fine nothing else so for int i equal to 0 so i don't think it will ever go to 256 actually to 6 i plus plus visited visited of i equal to 0 visited of i equal to 0 okay so i just make all the visited of i is 0 so array of i equal to 0 at the beginning the first element is 0 array of 1 equals to 0 that is the first element is 0 then 4 int i equal to 0 i less than 129 i plus plus so not from 0 we will start with 2 fine so after this so after this what we need to do is if visited if visited of array of i minus 1 array of i minus 1 is not equal to 0 is not equal to 0 then we need to update our array of i array of i will become the subtraction of these two indexes i minus 1 is the first index okay the last element that we are accessing minus visited of i array of i minus 1 that is the last element that we are accessing okay its previous index its previous occurrence we are subtracting the indexes of these two points okay else array of i if it is not true array of i equals to 0 and at the end visited rate of array of i minus 1 will become i minus 1 okay it will become i minus 1 so i think i wrote i plus plus somewhere previously one second yes yes it is not array of i plus plus here this is not plus plus this is actually equals to i minus 1 okay and the bottom i think i wrote it correctly okay so it is array of i minus 1 here so here done after this just have a count variable int count equal to 0 okay and 4 int i equal to 0 1 i less than equal to value why 1 because we are using one base indexing nothing else i plus plus if array of value equal to equal to array of i okay if array of value equal to equal to array of i then count plus plus then count plus plus what is the value so if value is 2 so what we need to do is we need to check how many times this 2 is coming till that point till that point only okay how many times the 2 is coming till that point only that is what we are checking here okay after this what we need to simply do is printing count printing count okay so here i think you understood this point is we have value if value here for example here only as you can see here this is the value that we have this is 0 0 1 0 2 0 2 2 0 so if n value is 7 sorry the value is 7 so just see array of value what is array of value array of value is nothing but 2 okay so just check for the first two just check for the first two and nothing else just check for the first seven elements sorry not the two elements just check for the first seven elements how many times two is coming just check for the first seven elements how many times two is coming okay how many times two is coming two is represented by array of value okay and elements are nothing but indexes i so if area of value equal to equal to area of i for the first seven elements for the first seven elements that is what we are doing okay so check, see here for the first seven elements if the value is equal to equal to the index value current index value then count plus plus for the first seven elements and then print just print count and submit it it will be submitted okay 
so this was a pretty straightforward question the only point here in this question was that how you are going to implement it you, are, you, you can use the n square approach also and you can use this approach also you can use i think you can use map also in this question okay for the storing this visited part and nothing else okay just storing this visited part okay so if you use that you do not have to understand this point why that we are using the element of the first array as the index of the second array okay as the index of the second array okay this part you do not need to understand if you're using map okay i didn't i didn't do this using map but i think this can be done using map also it will be simpler using that obviously if you know how to use it okay thank you